the Amstel River and it's me, my attempt to understand the water. When you look at water for longer, you can get so confused by what's actually happening. And the way to try and sort of navigate your way through that, to understand it, is that you look first for repetition, you look, you look for pattern and a rhythm, rhythm that repeats itself. And often the rhythms change because of go by or uh, the wind will change or something, a current will change or water will reflect against something. So what you're actually, and the light moves, you'll see my summarization of the different movements over about a two hour period. In a second, you're seeing a thousand seconds, as it were. That's the nature of painting, I suppose. It's the only medium I can think of where you see the beginning, the middle of the end, and the end all in one go. Photography goes through a machine. You look through the viewfinder, you make a decision, you click, and then it goes through a, a mechanical process. And with painting, you are that mechanical process where every brush mark, I find personally so telling. You can accidentally make a masterpiece with photography. Now that's impossible with painting. You can't accidentally. It's nothing, I mean, you use accident all the time, but every single step of the way is a decision. If you throw uh, 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 something at the canvas, you decide to leave it or not. You, you, everything you, you leave, everything you, when you stop, is, makes it a decision. And that's, you are in control of every step of the way. I mean, I've painted water for about 25 years in different forms. But I live on the Alderside, which is connected to the Amstel. And I often walk or cycle along the Amstel. It is a, it is a back cloth to where I live. So I thought I would use this as a, as a subject matter. It's an intuitive decision. And it's in my neighborhood. I, end up being attracted to because it's what I get to see all the time. I don't know how to work from photography. I never use it. Um, I love certain kinds of photographs and photographers, but I don't use it uh, in my work. I, I use being there <laughs> and the information that you get from actually being there, the sound, the, the smell, the temperature, the the visual information, it's, some people find that very confusing. I do too, at times, but I've, it, it's second to none for what I particularly want. It has its limitations, but that's, so does everything. So you work pretty quick? You have to. You have to be quick, but not too, not, not slovenly, I suppose. Everything changes so quickly. You change the, the light, the wind blows, a, cloud across, the shadows change, it's, um, you have to be attentive. It's like, as uh, Ivan Hitchens, the English landscape painter said, it's, it's, it's like hunting. You have to sort of, you have to watch, and it often it, it's vanished, you know, in time, the sun moves anyway, so the, the nature of these, what, what's called en plein air paintings is that you often finish them in one city. I was interested in picturesque. I am interested in the concept of picturesque. What makes us think that picturesque, what, what, it's, it's always, often has a very negative connotation to it. Um, for me, this is uh, uh, a very kind of pictorial view of boats and water with, you know, the trees in the background. However, at least my decision making was based on the fact that this cord which attaches the boat to the dry land created two shapes in the picture. So in a way it was important for me, in one sense I want to just show you, play with this idea of this is just a view and, in the, and at the same time say no this isn't just a view, this is actually a painting where the composition um, 
is all, all determines everything actually I, I like this is yet again saying you know for me for me this is as every bit abstract uh, if I may show you as one well, maybe every bit as abstract as another one that's much more of a zoom in everyone says oh this is very abstract painting because you don't immediately know what it is uh, my question is why does that make it more abstract why can you not do you see what I mean? This is, this is reflection of the water in the canal in Amsterdam under the bridge. But in the beginning, it looks like a sort of abstract painting. I think that th this one I showed you earlier is, is every bit as abstract, only at the same time being pictorial. I wanted to, to somehow explain the sensation of the light. So I, I found myself using very thin paint, leaving parts of the canvas here, which were suggest there were suggestions of the window frames above it actually, but they created something like this pattern. So I did something like that. I'm always trying, uh, attempting to do more than one thing. I'm not, every painting, but in its very nature, is, is an abstraction, I think. And yet, at the same time, I do, for some reason, want to present what you might call a sort of universal language of, this is water, this is uh, perspectival uh, depth. Um, somehow, having a foot in both worlds makes the painting less personal. I want to invite other people in to look at it and, and to interpret it. I think if they become, if I leave that representational side completely, which is a valid thing and a very old, old you know, it's been people have done it for hundreds of, you know, more than a hundred years now, I mean, but somehow I want a foot in that world of representation, still. I want to show you how I've seen a very normal corner of the world um, I want you to recognise it at that corner of the world, but also to see how I've maybe seen it at the same time. I just hang my abstract paintings on almost picturesque views. The thing you see here is finished in one sitting, so it's in the nature. It's, you have to have that kind of character, that sensibility to enjoy the, uh, the idea of making decisions, sticking to them. Um, there's no sort of time, not that much time to ponder, you know, go for a walk, come back, smoke a cigarette, phone someone. It's, it's quite active within three hours. It's, it's often, I'd say they're finished within about, between anything between an hour and four hours. One and four hours. I, for me personally, everything that you're seeing here, in, in some senses, I mean, they are very conservative paintings. They are of me sitting there painting, copying, interpreting what I have seen in front of me. Not, I'm not trying to embellish. I'm not trying to. I don't go there with a with an opinion about it. I don't want to tell you how beautiful or, or how ugly it is or any of that. I just want to go and respond to what I'm seeing.
Here's the beginning of the the slouse. I'm interested in everything when I paint, but in this particular instance, there's something about the utilitarian architecture, architecture that's or, or has a function to allow water in or out, or not a decorative, it has no decorative element to it. This functional forms and the play of light on it and the depth. Strong sense of depth in this painting. And there's a sense of light moving. And that as for, in painterly terms, the light moving the depth and then this very, very static, monumental block. Now that in itself is, is a great subject matter to get your teeth into, to paint. That is reason enough to make a painting. The, the obscurity or the absurdity of things is all around us, everywhere. And to re-look at what we, uh, or at least for me, to me, for me to re constantly re-look at what I see as normal is the most fascinating thing. Um, and my way of doing that is through painting. I want to present people with the everyday, but only to say that the everyday is not quite what one would think. And it's not so much that you change things, it's that you notice things that are often not noticed. When you paint from observation, you always have a reference. You always have a source. It's in what you look at, but it's also the translation to the flat form, to the, to the back into shapes.